Well, we've gone in our series to pulling the pistons out, the liners out, and, and now we have the block. Now, you remember when I pulled the liners out that this was all full of mud and rust and all that, so I put a big pot underneath it and I got the pressure cleaner in. And every time the, every time the pot got three or four inches in the bottom, I'd go and empty it out and I'd pressure clean again. And that's after having our journals taped up here. I still haven't taped up the end ones because they're facing downwards, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, we have to deal with this top end here. Um, a couple of ways of doing it. There's, I've made up a little box, a bit of box section with a bit of new, um, bit of newspaper. <laughs> Shit, that'd be good if that worked. A um, bit of sandpaper on it. Now, there is a stud left here. I tried getting that out a couple of times and it was just too hard. I, I was fearing breaking it off, so I'm just gonna work around it because I, I didn't actually wanna get oxy heat down the side of the block here and ruin the look of the tractor and all that. And that just won't affect us, we'll be okay. Now, all this rust you can see down here, there's a little bit of rust in that there still. Now, the pressure cleaner took an awful lot of that out, but when it dries out a little bit, well, at any time, these surfaces here are where your liner sits. So there's a couple of places we really need to be on, be on our game. The, this is a new liner, and when we take a new liner and put it down in the bore, I won't slide this one right down yet, but um, when we put it down in the bore, the shoulder here on the liner is where it sits down here. Now, I've seen many times where people have, they've cleaned up, they've pulled the liners out, they've put a new engine kit in, and then they ring me and say, oh, they've put an engine kit in my tractor and it's leaking water into the sump. And I say, well, you know, did you clean the block and did you make sure these were really nice and clean? Oh, yeah, we did. But what happens, and I, I may be able to show you what happened, is you clean out around the side here and you can see that surface there. Now, originally that surface, and from the factory, they had a paper gasket under the liner. And this is this is one here. And the liner sits down hard on that paper gasket, and that seals your cooling system at the bottom of the liner from your engine oil in the sump. So originally they have this paper one, and so when you pull the paper one out, you have to make sure that this surface where it sits is really, really clean, right up into the corner. But what happens, people tell me that's nice and clean, they, they do a good job on that. But what happens is if they don't clean around here properly, and there's a couple of little rusty dags there, when you bring the liner, this is upside down, but when the liner comes down, you can see that's a bit firm there now. And what happens is a bit of junk from this rusty surface area um, it, it comes up and I'll just I'll change the angle of the camera just a little bit so I'm not in your face so much you can see I've got me buddy you butte safety thongs on here me very favorite but <laughs> but yeah when they when they pull the liner down and it has to it come down in through here as with this section here this this surface here is slightly smaller than this one here. And once you get the liners down in, you have, these flats are important because you have another liner comes up against that flat. And now look at that. Wouldn't do that if I wanted it to. So um, what happens is when the liner comes down, they loosen a little bit of shit from the side here and it drops down onto there. Now, 
with these old paper ones, the new ones supplied by Sparex are aluminium, they're alloy, and their part number's S42488, and they're aluminium ones. That's fine, nothing wrong with that. Um, I will do a measure shortly, I'll, I'll, mic, I'll get the micrometer out and I'll mic these up, and these will compress a little bit um, with bolting the liners down, but these go down into the hole there once it's clean. And I actually put Loctite 515 on both sides of these. And what happens when you pull the liner down, a little bit gets around the liner and it seals it around there, so you never have a worry. But with these here, you put a bit of Loctite on, a bit of 515 I like to, and you bring the liner down and it's all right getting this in there like that, no worries. But when you bring the liner down, you loosen a bit of crud, it sits on here, the liner sits up a little bit, and then you have the problem of your liners not being level across the top here. So, so cleaning this block at the moment is very important. Now, yeah, that's a little bit tight for me. Um, I'm not sure that won't move. I'm not sure that won't move going down. So I may even just take a take just a sliver out of the inside. What I want to do is be able to sit the liners in like this. Pop down. They're, they're not relying on this little piece here. See where this is slightly too small, I believe. Um, this bit of the liner here is cut away anyway. It's, it's relieved just just in that, have the surface here that's it's relieved slightly under the shoulder. So it's the shoulder here that does the sealing, not that being tied on the liner. So I'll have a look at these, but I'll probably open them up just a little bit, I believe. And I'll probably try and do a couple of tests with these and We'll, we'll wait until we come to the section where we put the liners in, or we just set liners liner height. We might just do a, a quick video on that. But they they set your liner height because they determine with the sleeve sitting on the on the gasket here, they determine how high it comes up. Now, if these are too thin, and look, they do feel thin to me, but um, we'll put two on. We'll put two in each hole, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in diesel engines, particularly over the years, um, John Deere and all that, they do have shims to... They, they have a, a flange liner where the flange is up the top, but they do have shims there to set your liner height. So, how do we clean the top of the... Well, probably how do we clean inside down here? Well, I like to use a, a little right angle angle grinder. Now, on these angle grinders, on the die grinders, um, I use a row lock fitting. And you can buy these on eBay, you can buy these on eBay, cheap as chips. And now there's different size or different colour um, Scotch Brite pads that you can get for them. Now, the brown one here, that's very aggressive. And if you run across the top of the block here, you leave tiny little marks in the top, and which is what we don't want. We particularly don't need that. So, um, the blue one here is made for aluminium, and it'll clean a gasket off aluminium, and, but it will hardly mark at all the cast iron here. The red one, I've got a red one here, I think there's a grey one that's finer too. So, you just need a really fine one. Now, if you can see it, I've done a little run down here with it and you can see with the first run I've done you can see the lines are still there there's a little little line that's in the top of the block there um, you can see a bit of crud that needs cleaning away here and so you can use something like that just to tidy the top of the block up but you don't want to you don't want to mark it up now you can buy a, this is a 120 pad for the row lock um, fitting. I don't use that. Um, 
The reason I don't use that is because you're sanding the top and how do you know you've got it level? So another thing I often like to do and I'll just have a quick demonstration here is a little sanding block like that. Now with that little sanding block the um, I've done a little video and I'll show you at the end of this video I'll tag that little video on the end of me making this and um, it's just to help you out a little bit but look just as good as anything is a, a little spray with a bit of WD-40 and I like to grab the tool here and sand away and this is a pretty good idea um, well says me that made it <laughs> you might think it's shit but look this is a pretty good idea you can go back and forth right across the block get that distributor lead out of the way and that one there and if this piece of paper starts getting buggered up well you just turn it over and use the next bit so with that little bit of sanding there I haven't got a bit of rag here, I'll just get a piece of rag. Now that's probably pretty good. But we do have other problems here. Now, along here, you can feel there's something sitting there. And I might be able to, if I run my scraper through, you can see that, same here. And that's a little bit of rust that's come up the side because the liners, when the liners sit down the bore, they have this little flat section here so coolant comes up there. And I'll just put that liner back so I don't lose it or drop it or something. So you have to be really careful about these places there. So with the bar, and this is part of the reason I like the bar, is put a bit of inox there or a bit of WD-40 or your favourite one, and you come across the top. And this top surface is very important to getting a good seal with your head gasket later. And you can see I'm touching here all the way around there. Even though there's a little, a little rusty shadow there, we're not high at all there. So you can run the scraper straight through there now. No worries at all. There's no resistance. So we know we've got it clean. So so you have a couple of options. You can you can make this thing here, and look, this is just a good tool for getting it clean and straight. This little hole here is where the oil comes up to the cylinder head. Um, sometimes I just pop a little bit of grease down there for this exercise, or um, I have even taped it off in the past just to keep a bit of junk out. So we'll so we'll clean along there and. Um, I'll, I'll show you the end result. Now, to clean inside the block here, um, we, we get all this, all the rubbish out of here. And I often leave the liner seals in. And the reason is, just with them there, if I bump it with something or bugger it up, well, you know, I'm not damaging that surface. You want that surface as clean, as clean as you can get. Now, you can hop into your block here with an angle grinder with a wire brush on it, a three inch wire brush on it. But look, the guard gets in the way and it's just a bloody nuisance, really. <laughs> this is what I do. Now, I'm not telling you to do this because it's dangerous. It is dangerous to do. Um, and you really have to have your wits about you because the safety handle can't be on it. But I have a grinder here. I've taken the guard off. I've taken the handle off and I hang on with dear, the dear life and I run it up and down inside the bore there. And 
get it as clean as I possibly can. And you can get a lot of area with this and what we're looking to do is, as I said before, is to take any scale off. Now, a couple of reasons, a little bit of scale here, once you put coolant in and run it, because you've had it dry, a little bit of scale might drop down and get into your cooling system and where's it go? It goes straight up to your radiator and starts blocking your nice brand new radiator off. So um, there's a couple of good reasons to have a really good cleanup in here. So I'll take the cameras out of the road so I don't bugger them up with grinders and things. I'll clean this up as best I can and I'll come back and I'll I'll show you what I believe is acceptable. Now all this dirt and grit and shit has to go somewhere. It goes down of course, gravity, gravity takes its toll here. So what I often do is once it's done I get a bit of petrol or diesel or something like that and I just flush down over the crankshaft. So anything on the crankshaft, any bits of dust or grit or all that are washed down through into a pot underneath so it's not there anymore. So I'll take the camera away, I'll clean this block up, I'll get the wire brush into here and round and, and these surfaces here are particularly important because that's often where the shit gets down on that bottom and makes you have to do a bit of rework, pull the head off again. Nothing worse than having to do the job twice. Well there you go, I'm going to call that clean. I've just sprayed a bit of inox over everything just to stop it rusting until I can get back to fitting the liners. Now, what did we do? Well, we got the wire brush in there like I spoke about and I cleaned any rust scale off. Then I got the little angle 90 degree die grinder in and loosened everything up that I could. Then I got in there and scraped away and had a scraper and just scraped all the sides to try and get everything off that I could and then I cleaned the top along the top here and I, I used one of those little blue pads just to take the bit of gasket and the rubbish off outside here then once I got that off I put the sanding block on my, my trusty sanding block and I went back and forth and up and down and round about and tidied it all up with that now, these little liner shoulders, the shoulders for the liners, um, you remember when I pulled this engine apart, uh, all the rust and that, and it had right into these corners, and right into these corners here, around the edge, there was little rust bubbles coming out, so I had to clean them out. So I was having trouble with the scraper, so I, I made this tool out of a file file. And look, I don't know what degrees that is, 30, 25, something like that. And I just cut it on one side. And I just took the remains of the teeth off the back so it was smooth. And coming in on an angle, that gave me the opportunity to scrape the whole side nice and good on an angle. Instead of my other scraper, I had to come in pretty well straight up. But this gave me the option of turning it over and coming down through here with the scraper one way and if I wanted to I could just go the other way so look that I found that was a good tool now it was a handy little thing to make for this job it's just the whole file no nothing major nothing special and then once I cleaned everything out as best I could I just got a bit of kerosene type base degreaser, parts cleaner and I sprayed all around, let it soak in a little bit and then I pressure washed the whole block once more and you can still see there's a, you can see the fluid under there, that's the water still there um, so it can sort of drip dry and so then I come in with the air nozzle and I blew and blew and blew and I blew till everything was as dry as I can possibly get it and you can see a couple of little rusty marks still but look I'm confident there's no scale going to come out might be a little bit there after just saying that there's always something isn't there <laughs> but anyway I'll, I'll have another couple of looks before we commit to putting sleeves in 
and I'll just get an LED light going here and that'll give you some there's a fair bit of staining there that's just staining but there's nothing nothing there that's going to do us any damage and right the way around now you can't see if I put the light in the road can you but anyway that was the general gist of it and so at the moment I've just sprayed it with a WD-40 compound just to put an oily film on everything because I had the water there and I, I pressure cleaned it once more so once I dried it I put the WD-40 on there the WD-40 will protect all these surfaces um, it protects the whole outer surface and if you don't get back to it for a couple of days in, in Australia it's, it's quite well you know it's mid 30s oh well probably low 30s at the moment most days and if I come back in a day or two that'll have dried out which is something WD-40 often does but it does help dissipate or dissipate dissipate I think the word is anyway it pisses off any moisture <laughs> so um, so that that block is going to be how we're going to have it now um, before I put the liners in I'm going to make sure there's no burrs or nothing down the bottom there um, and look, I feel that was good so so there you go that'll do for the video on cleaning the block oh another thing that I haven't mentioned is this little hole here there's a hole comes through the side for the drain tap um, which which um, I don't know if I could get I'll find see if I can find something to poke up the hole for you but um, here's the dipstick it's handy I know a few dipsticks and there you go so that comes from the side in through there so just make sure that's clean ideal opportunity now you're not going to push any junk where you don't want it and free up your tap and all that if you'd like to so so there you go that's cleaning the cylinder block that's how I do it that's our little chat about it um, yeah we'll move on Press well, we're over on the bench and I'll just show you how to make a little tool that I use sometimes for um, just decking the top of the um, block now you can wrap a bit of sandpaper I've got a bit of a bit of 280 here and um, you can wrap your sandpaper around a file and run it across but you can bend the file you know with, with a bit of pressure on the file you can bend it and we don't particularly want to do that so what I like to do is I've got Kelly dog barking again <laughs> I'll have to dock her pay um, with this bit of box and look this is just what I'm using it's a bit of 40 mil I reckon that would be 40 mil box I know it's true I've sanded the burr off the edge so that it's not higher than the rest of the bar and look just a good quick tool for cleaning up the top of the block is wrapping a bit of paper around there so I usually just do a, a quick dummy run and see how far my paper is going to go around so if I start with my paper in the middle and I pull it tight as I go around that will finish me on an edge which is pretty good that's what I want so what I'm going to do now is get a bit of old masking tape and look this masking tape is old don't know where I found this one but anyway it's what we got so we'll use it I think this is left over from Noah when he was slapping a bit of paint on the ark okay so look all I'm doing here is trying to line that up straight at about halfway across something like that popping a bit of tape on there you think I'd invest in a better bit of tape really but anyway it doesn't matter and just make sure that's nice and flat and I'll put a little bit down the ends the ends cop a bit of a caning so I'll get another bit off here <laughs> first roll I grab and it's just junk okay I'll put a little bit down there 
just to hold the corner in place. And another piece in the middle. Oh, at the other end, I'm sorry. You can hear the shed creaking a bit in my videos. We're in a big tin shed and that's just how it goes. So I try and get it out with the microphone. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Okay, so we've taped that down. Pull him tight. Um, that's it. Now, when you're rubbing it across the top of the block, I usually like a little flap. See, I've got this little bit over the end here. I usually like that. And we can rub the block with this bit. And if our paper starts clogging up on that, we just turn it a bit and we can rub the top with the other piece. And then, you know, as you can see, we get a couple of goes with the one piece of paper and we get to use the full width of the paper. And when we come back to this piece here, we can always just run this paper, piece of sandpaper back down. So we'll go over and use this shortly, but I just thought, just a quick little clip on it, just to um, show you, just a homemade tool. It's, it's a homemade straight edge, and a lot of you won't have a lot of gear, but you can probably do this easily.